Boston Red Sox. Participating advertisers are Lowenbrow. When you want the taste of a truly great beer, there's really only one. Tonight, let it be Lowenbrow. And Toyota hopes you'll enjoy this Yankee game. You asked for it, now you get more than your money's worth at Toyota. Manufacturers Hanover, where it's banking the way you want it to be. Burger King, where you get the best darn burgers, all 100% pure beef. Pepsi Cola and your local Pepsi bottler. Have a Pepsi day. Colonial Provision Company, the makers of Yankee Franks, with the taste that takes you out to the ball game. Con Edison, serving 9 million people in New York and Westchester. The 70 greater New York area Midas dealers who say, when it comes to your car, don't compromise, Midasize. Panasonic, just slightly ahead of our time with a full line of quality home electronics products. And the New York Yankees. Have fun with Dinah Entergan. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Frank Messer. Along with the scooter, Phil Rizzuto, we'll be joined later by Bill White on a beautiful, beautiful fall day here in Fenway Park. Bill Rizzuto, this is something I've never been through. You've never been through. A one-game playoff to decide the American League Eastern Division champion. It's a shame it has to come down to that, Frank, really. I mean, they're two great teams, and to finish with 99 wins, both of them, in one year, it's got to be fantastic. You know, it was 30 years ago, almost to the day, actually, it was October 4th, when the only other playoff was here, and Bob Lemon was involved in that one, too, and that time he was a player. He was a player, so was Al Rosen, who is now the president of the Yankees. And as I recall, the Cleveland Indians won that ball game here right. from the Boston Red Sox. What about this afternoon's game, Scooter? The Yankees are going with Ron Guidry, again starting with only three days rest. Well, if history repeats itself, the Yankees should win because the Indians went with a left-hander, Gene Bearden, and the Red Sox went with a right-hander, Denny Galehouse. At that time, Joe McCarthy was managing, and Galehouse was the only pitcher to volunteer to pitch that playoff game. And I remember talking to McCarthy later on. He had been the Yankee manager. I had played under Joe, and he was very upset. But there were some other starters who he thought were better than Galehouse, but Galehouse wanted to pitch, and unfortunately, he lost to the Indians. All right on paper, the Yankees, Gidry, a better record for the year than the Red Sox, Mike Torres, who really is not the number one pitcher on that staff, and that is not to say that he might not go out this afternoon and pitch a no-hitter. I think uh, perhaps season records have little to do with this one ball game. You're absolutely right, Frank. Most of the times you can throw the records right out the window. The only uh, thing in the Yankees' favor, I think, is that Torres, through his career, without a team he's been with, has only defeated the Yankees one time and lost to them five times. Now, this is a big pressure ball game. We know that Ron Gadry as a kid seems to have ice water flowing through his veins. On the other hand, Torres, very excitable Latin type. And uh, if things happen early in the ball game, we've seen it can get to him. So I think both clubs have to get to the starting pitches early. Otherwise, it's going to be a very low scoring game. All right. Again, traditionally, the Yankees this year have not been a club to come from behind that often. The Red Sox have been a club that can come from behind. My thought is, if you got on the scoreboard first here, if the Yankees get on the scoreboard first, they could be in pretty good shape. I think you're right, Frank, and that's one reason I'm uh, happy that the Yankees are leading off in this ball game. And of course, Mickey Rivers, the big man for the Yankees, unfortunately he didn't get on against the Indians in the game they lost. But if he can start things off, we'll see a ball game. We'll see a lot of excitement. All right, another point, Phil. The Yankees are playing without their regular second baseman, Willie Randolph, acclaimed by most experts as one of the best, if not the best, in the American League. By the same token, the Red Sox are playing without their regular third baseman, Butch Hobson, who is their designated hitter but can't throw. Well, I don't think either position is going to be hurt too much defensively. I think uh, Brian Doyle covers a lot of ground. The kid can make the double play. He's not nearly as good a hitter, we know, as Willie Randolph. And uh, Brohammer the same uh, way. He can field third base. He can hit, but they do have Hobson in the lineup. He's the designated hitter. Whereas the Yankees are going to miss Willie altogether. All right. What about emotions for this ball game? Uh, I visited the Yankee clubhouse briefly and uh, thought of a, an air of quiet anticipation. There, the guys trying to relax, but I, you know, I don't see how anybody could really relax before this game. You can't, Frank. I know 
first game uh, before any World Series, I wouldn't sleep all night. We never had playoffs in those days. I'm sure a lot of the Yankee ball players had very restless nights. The Red Sox, of course, got a reprieve, never thinking they'd be in this playoff, thinking that the Yankees were going to sweep Cleveland and win the pennant. All right, and we'll be all set for this very important ball game when we come back in just one minute. This program is authorized under rights granted by the New York Yankees solely for the entertainment of our audience and any publication, reproduction, or other use of the descriptions and accounts of this game without the express consent of the New York Yankees is prohibited. There are the two dugouts. Clyde King up on the top step of the Yankee dugout. Mickey Rivers will lead the ball game off with a bat in his hand. Ron Guidry right there. The camera just passed him. Brian Doyle, Dick Hauser. You can pick them out probably just as well as we can from the number of Yankee games you've watched on television or out at Yankee Stadium this year. There's Ron Guidry with a jacket on. Kid looks like he's very relaxed down there. And uh, Reggie Jackson up there in the upper uh, part of the steps to the left of your screen as you look. And we're waiting now for the Red Sox to take the field. And I guess they're waiting on a cue from somebody down there because we are now past the advertised starting time of this game. And now the Red Sox do take the field. As you can see, is an absolute 100% sellout. They could have sold twice, maybe three times, maybe four times the number of tickets they were able to put out for this uh, stadium. A crowd, I'm going to estimate 36,000. It may go even more than that. I do not know how many standees the safety commission here in Boston will allow into Fenway for the ball game. Mike Torres, during the season, won 16. He lost 12. His record this year, one win and three losses against the New York Yankees. As Phil Rizzuto told you in his career, he has beaten the Yankees only one time and lost to them five. This is Torres' 36th start. Last time out, he beat the Tigers on Thursday with a three-hitter. So he is pitching on three days rest, but that is the way he likes it. That was a big bone of contention with Torres when he was with the Yankees. He wanted to pitch every fourth day, and in the Yankee rotation, that was not always possible. Torres let it upset him. But I'll tell you one thing about this man, Phil Rizzuto. He came back last year in the playoffs and the World Series and did just an outstanding job as a New York Yankee pitcher. He really did. He's very surprised. He figures he's a great pitcher in the month of September and won only one game in the month of September. This year at Fenway Park, Torres has won eight, and he has lost six in, in uh, 17 starts. Prior to Thursday's win over the Tigers, he went 0 for 6 in eight starts after winning his 15th game of the year, August 18th, out in Oakland. This will be the first time that Torres this year has been matched up against Ron Guidry. His only win this year against the Yankees and the only win in his career against the Yankees came August 3rd in New York at 8 to 1 rain shortened six inning ball game. So overall Torres has pitched 19 innings this year against the Yankees and on 28 hits 16 runs eight walks 11 strikeouts and an earned run average of 6.16. And ladies and gentlemen, let me go on record right now as saying if you don't believe baseball is our national pastime, you should be here at Fenway Park this afternoon. Absolutely nothing like it. I've seen playoff games. I've seen World Series. And this has got to top anything I've seen in my baseball career. Mickey Rivers will lead off for the Yankees and leading off with the play-by-play, -play, here's Phil Rizzuto. All right, Frank Mick batted 264 in the air. 11 homers, 48 runs batted in, and this very important ball game will be officially started with his first pitch, and it's low ball one. You saw the third baseman, Brohammer, sneaking in on the grass. Absolutely beautiful day, as Frank told you. Couldn't ask for a better day. Mickey using the crouch stance today. 
high, two nothing. I tell you, both pitchers trying to be very calm, but there's an awful lot of pressure. They know that every pitch and the ball players know every play is so important. The whole season resting on this one ball game. Ball three, three and nothing. And it's strange to see Mickey trying to work his way on with a walk. He has gotten more walks this year than any other year as a Yankee. And that's not many, though. It is 27. So Mike Torres, 3-0. and oh. High ball four. He didn't come close for a strike. And we told you, when Rivers gets on, things happen. Against the Red Sox this year, Rivers has stolen two bases in his only two attempts. George Scott's coming over to talk with Torres and settle him down a little bit. You cannot imagine the tremendous amount of pressure that the ball players feel in a game like this. Now Torres wants a new ball. I don't blame him. He didn't get that one near the strike zone. Thurman Munson batting 297, six homers and 70 runs batted in. Thurman came up 32 times against the Red Sox pitching scooter. Ten base hits, nine singles, one home run. All right, the wind, by the way, blowing quartering from uh, left center over towards right field. And a lot of balls were hit on the screen against the wall in batting practice. Rivers leads away. There he goes. And it's high to throw to second. He's safe. Holy cow. Mickey Rivers. Surprised everybody. A perfect throw by Fisk, but a stolen base easily. Watch it here. Watch the jump Rivers gets. He steals that base on Torres. Look at him going before Torres even releases the ball. Fisk made a perfect throw and didn't even come close. Rivers stole that base on Torres. And had it not been for one of the best throws you'll see ever from a catcher, it wouldn't even have been that close. You're right, Frank. So Rivers at second, and the pitch, by the way, was a ball. That's five straight balls that Torres has delivered. So the Yankees playing wide open baseball here in the first inning. He held up. Oh, he called it a strike. Munson, I believe, held up, but it must have nicked the corner. As Thurman has the plate umpire. By the way, the umpire is Don Denkinger behind the plate. Jim Evans at first, Al Clark at second, and Steve Palermo over at third. Outside to a one. Rest of the Yankee order will be Pinella batting third in right field. Reggie Jackson, the designated hitter, bats cleanup. Greg Nettles at third. Chris Chambliss at first. Roy White in left. Brian Doyle at second. And Bucky Dent at short. Burleson trying to sneak in back of Rivers. And Munson swings and misses. Two balls, two strikes. Thurman, a big man here now. Either a base hit or a hit to the right side to advance Rivers to third. First run of the ball game so important, Frank. I've got to think Munson is a key man for Torres. This is this is the big man. Torres gets Munson, he might settle down. And Munson held up. Ball blocked nicely by Fisk. Rivers had a hold at second. Fisk, one of the best in the business at blocking. Balls bouncing in the dirt. Watch it again on the replay. Look at that. Changed the glove around. Blocked it with his chest, really. Mask went off. He was ready to grab that ball and throw. Rivers not gambling at all down at second base. Held his ground. I'll tell you, Scooter, if Torres gets Munson, it could be a big boost to him. If Munson gets the base hit or even a walk, could be an early turning point in the game. All right. And they've got action in the Red Sox bullpen, taking no chances. He wheels, throws. Rivers back. Good play there. Now, that was a time play. Torres did not tip it off. In other words, the shortstop gives a sign. He counts to two and breaks to second. The pitcher counts to one and wheels around and throws. Three and two on Munson. Struck him out with a breaking pitch. A big strikeout for Mike Torres. And coming in with a good slider. Let's watch it again. This is a big pitch for Torres. Pitch moved well. Munson really did not come close to it at all on his swing. Uh, Torres gets the man that he had to get right there. Bob Stanley is out there in their bullpen, Scooter. All right, here's Lou Pinello. 
Lewis had a great year. 314 average. 34 doubles leads the Yankees there. Five triples, six homers, 69 runs batted in. Bounce to the third. Bro Hammer has it. Throws out Pinella, and there are two away. Told you, Brohammer can feel that position. He ranged far to his left for that one. And now the crowd building up their booze for Reggie Jackson. We'll watch that last play again. That's a good pitch for Pinella to hit. He hit on top of it. Good play by Brohammer to his left. Those he has plenty of time to get Pinella, who is not fleet of foot to start with and still has an injured heel. Hard to run. Well, Torres is really throwing that slider now. He didn't have control of his fastball. And that's the pitch you got to go the opposite field on if you're a right hand batter. Reggie Jackson batting 274. 26 homers and 96 runs batted in. Two men out here in the top of the first. Looked like the Yankees were going to get on the scoreboard right away. They still have an excellent chance. plate not in on Reggie he had a clean swing at it he was not tentative on his swing so he makes contact he can make the ball go but he's got to get hold of it It's blown as Phil told you, quartering out toward from the left field corner, sort of toward right field. It's uh, strong enough to be a factor in this game, too. Could hurt a left hand header, could blow a ball foul, that could stay fair down the right field line. All right, Reggie trying to get comfortable at the plate. And hits one a left. Will it carry? Yastrzemski, no, he's there. The wind held it up, and he makes the catch. Jackson and the Yankees. No runs, no hits, no errors. A man left, no score at the end of one half inning. The Yankees put the pressure on Torres at the top half of the first inning, but could not score. Rivers with a walk, stole second, but the big play by Torres when he struck out Thurman Munson with the slider. Thurman tried to pull it and struck out. Didn't really come close to hitting the ball. The ball hit by Jackson, as Phil told you, held up by the wind. So now the Red Sox have a boost as they come to bat here in the bottom half of the first. They'll have Burleson, Remy, and Rice coming up against left-hander Ron Guidry. Ronnie over the year, 24 wins, three losses, 2-0 this season against the Boston Red Sox. All right, Frank Burleson batting 248, 31 doubles, five triples, five homers, and 49 runs batted in. Now he likes to swing at that first pitch. And does fouls it back up on the roof out of play strike one. For Guidry this is his 35th start. He last pitched Thursday at the Yankee Stadium beat the Blue Jays three to one on a four hitter. A little bit high with a breaking pitch one on one. Louisiana Lightning Ron Guidry. Strike two a sharp breaking pitch by Guidry. Ball and two strikes on Burleson. Oh, Munson and Guidry wanted that one. Look at them. Don Denking has said no as Munson questions him. It's two and two. Strike three. I tell you, the pitch before that one was a better one than that one. But he struck out. So every once in a while when you argue, it does you a little bit of good. Watch the last pitch again. Well, that pitch came down more as we saw it on the replay. When I saw it originally, I thought the pitch was coming in higher. It did break down just a bit. All right, here's Jerry Remy, the uh, second baseman. 
batting 276. He had a fine year. Ball one. He had 23 doubles, six triples, two homers, and 44 runs batted in. He was injured the last time the Yankees came up here to Fenway to play. High fly. The wind will hold that one up. Roy White moving in under it, and there are two away. You see the wind playing tricks with that ball, and now the man who most people think will be the most valuable player in the American League, although there's been a lot of votes, I think will be cast for Ron Guidry, Jim Rice. And the fans stand up, pay him tribute. What a year, Frank. Yes, he has. He's had an excellent year. Guidry and Rice are going to finish 1-2 in the voting for the most valuable player in the American League. And it, uh, from people I've talked to, and it would appear that Rice has the slight edge in the voting among the writers on the committee. All right, Frank. Strike one on Rice going for the net. He's batted 315 this year. 25 doubles, 15 triples, 46 homers, and 138 runs batted in. Strike two. I tell you, Guidry is just throwing his power against Rice's power. And so far, Guidry is out in front. Nothing in two. Low. Put a little extra on that one. Got away a ball and two strikes. Here's an almost unbelievable note. 14 of Rice's homers have come in the first inning. Now listen to this. 30 of his home runs have either tied the score or put the Red Sox ahead. You want to know something, Frank? Let's see. Just outside, two and two. Just as Rice came up, that wind is shifting and is blowing towards left field. Would you believe it? The Red Sox even control the wind. I believe. Here. I believe anything. I've seen. Holy cow! It did. It swung around. Struck him out though on a good slider. Holy cow! Three up, three down, into one, no score. All right, a quick look into the Yankee dugout. Skipper Bob Lemon. With his troops, that's Clyde King on the left. Bucky down number 20 with his back to you. Pitching coach, Art Fowler. Reggie Jackson, Thurman Munson with the gear still on. Where's that? Lemon? That's Lemon right there in the middle. Fowler had just moved down the line. So the Yankees have the left-hand hitters coming up. Nettles, Chambliss, and of course, Roy White. All batting lefty and that wind uh, Phil it's it's strange it's still blowing out toward that left field wall and just in a matter of like one minute it completely turned around here. It's unbelievable. So the uh, pitch is going to have to be on the ball now both uh, Guidry and Torres. If that wind had been blowing like that when Jackson was up his ball would have been either on the screen or high up off the wall. I think it would have been on the screen. It was high enough and it only had to carry about uh, another couple of feet Phil. That wind uh -huh. would have made a big difference in it. Of course nope. to get the ball on the screen you got to hit it high in the air. That wall is only 315 feet down there but you got to get it up uh, 60 feet high when it comes down to make it go in that screen atop the left field wall. We're waiting for those signs to be taken down. First time I've ever seen them or heard them. On the PA uh, system, say uh, take the signs down. Evidently, uh, just in direct line with the hitter would bother the hitter. There is no batter's eye as such here when they put uh, fans in the bleacher seats in direct center field. And now the security people are out there requesting the fans to take their batters down. That is just a courtesy. Of course, they're not hanging over the wall, but as a courtesy to the hitters. And in this case, the Yankee hitters, they will ask him to take him down. All right, Greg Nettles steps in. Great year for Greg. Highest he's ever batted in the big leagues. 278. Leads the Yankees in homers. And ball one from Big Mike Torres. Nettles, 23 doubles, two triples, 27 homers, and 93 runs batted in. Check swing pop up at Burleson moving back. Shading his eyes and makes the catch as Nettles couldn't check the swing. The ball was out of the strike zone. One away. Here it is again. You'll see a very furtive swing on Nettles' part. Not aggressive at all. They tried to stop the bat, but he made contact. Indication he was fooled on that pitch completely. And uh, uh, here's a guy who could be a key fill. He has not been swinging the bat that well the last few games. No, and he's seen a lot of left-hand pitching, Frank. Chris Chambliss, and he takes the ball. Chris, the lowest I've ever seen him. 
274, 26 doubles, 3 triples, 12 homers, 90 runs batted in. Mike Torres, no wind-up delivery. And that breaking pitch is over. One-on-one. Torres having problems with the fastball, but he has been getting the slider and the curveball over. And as long as you're having success, you stick with it. As a fastball inside, two and one. Of course, I've seen a pitcher start out in the game, not have one of his pitches. It will come to him later on as he goes along in the course of a game. Right, if he's lucky enough to stay in there. Yeah. Pull, but right at George Scott. Chambliss hit a bullet, but Scott guarding the line as well he should. Give him a single, but not a double. The Boma comes up. Let's see where this pitch is. Right down over the heart of the plate. Jambless, that little step back, and it right at Scott. I tell you, you got that guy in there. You got a good defensive first baseman. All right, Roy White, the batter. Roy batting 268, 13 doubles, three triples, eight homers, 42 runs batted, and two out, nobody on, and no score in the top of the second. Not only has the wind shifted, it's getting chillier up here. Ball one, Aroy. In Boston, doesn't take long for weather to change. Good pitch. That thing really broke off the end of a table. One on one. Two out, nobody on. Fouled as Roy went to left field with the breaking pitch away. Ball and two strikes. Great weather for the ball players. This little nip in the air makes you feel a little stronger, a little faster. Struck him out. at the end of an inning and a half. All right, we're ready for the bottom half of the second inning here at Fenway Park. And other than our ball game, here, let's listen to the ovation for Yastrzemski. I can remember the time, Phil, and I know you can too, when Yaz did not hear everybody cheering for him, even in his own ballpark. That's right, I, Frank. I think it's a great, great thing that the fans have swung their allegiance back to one of the fine ball players of our era. Absolutely, and Yaz says that this is the most important ball game he's played in in his 18 years in a Red Sox uniform. Strike one, Yaz. Batting 276, 21 doubles, two triples, 16 homers, 79 runs batted in. We have no score on the bottom of the second. Ron Guidry on the mound for the Yankees. That's gone. It's a home run if it stays fair. And a home run for Yastrzemski. The Red Sox lead one and nothing. Oh, he really put a charge into that one. Successful keeping that ball down to the Red Sox setters. That's down, but too far down, two and nothing. Home 
hometown crowd can be a big help. And Roy White will get this one. They're not traveling the left field. Roy makes the catch. One away. Gidry now will work to Fred Lynn. Lynn uh, batted 298 with 33 doubles, three triples, 22 homers, 81 runs batted in. He was a hot hitter for the Red Sox. And hits one deep to center. Mickey Rivers back, back on the track and makes the catch in deep center field. Holy cow, that's three hard hit balls off Gidry in this inning. So Gidry. far, only one has hurt him. You have to feel that Gidry may have lost just a little bit off his fastball. He earlier in the year he'd get by with that pitch. He's going to now, I think, have to go to his slider more, Phil, and keep the ball down. Well, that's what he did to Burleson and Rice. Butch Hobson, the batter. Strike one. Hobson batted 250 with 26 doubles, two triples, 17 homers, 80 runs batted in. Foul back, strike two. Something, uh, a strange thing about Gidry, we've noticed it in uh, several games this year. As the game goes along, he will start throwing harder. That's right. He gets by the first couple innings, fouled back again. Still nothing in two. Red Sox in front, one and nothing on the homer by Yastrzemski. Gidry wasting no time. It's high, one ball, two strikes. Outside two and two. Butch Hobson's played with a bad elbow quite a bit of the year. Bothered is swinging and throwing. Bouncing ball a third. Nice play by Nettles. And the Golden Glove throws him out. One run on the homer by Yaz at the end of two. Boston one and the Yankees nothing. your seats for the American League Championship Series in New York are now on sale at more than 100 Ticketron outlets. The price is $4 plus a service charge with a limit of four seats per game per customer. To find the Ticketron outlet nearest you, call 212-977-9020. That number again, 212-977-9020. The three championship series games will be this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Well, there's a man who put the Red Sox ahead with his 17th home run of the year. Left fielder Carl Yastrzemski. An institution in Boston baseball for 18 years. Brian Doyle, Bucky Dent, and Mickey Rivers will be the Yankee batters here as we go to the third inning. The Red Sox lead 1-0. All right, Frank, Brian Doyle batted 200 on the year, been about only 50 times, 10 hits, no extra base hits, no RBIs. And he pops one in shallow right. Remy is back there calling for it and makes the catch. One away. And once again, we mentioned the wind has completely turned around 100 degrees from the way it was blowing at the beginning of the game. Make that 180 degrees. I'm not going right. to let you set my compass. <laughs> All right, Bucky Dent. Bucky batting 243, 11 doubles, a triple, four homers, 37 runs batted in. High ball one. On the corner with a slider, one and one. Bucky choking up on the bat, wearing two golf gloves. High two and one. Beautiful sunshiny day here in Beantown. A uh, looper in a right center, Rice digging. And right.
Rice makes the catch. He was playing dead shallow. The only reason he was able to come up with that ball, they had positioned him perfectly. Watch it again. Defense so much a part of the game of baseball. Got it in uh, down the bat handle. Rice coming on from the right-hand side of your picture to make the catch. Lynn would not have gotten to that ball. Neither would the second baseman, Remy, going back. If Rice had not caught it, the ball would have fallen in. All right, the only Yankee to get on base now against Torres. Mickey Rivers, after that, Torres retired the next eight batters. Mickey walked and stole a base first time up. Strike one. Red Sox leading 1 0 in the top of the third. Bro Hammer continues to play in at third. I want him on. He walked Mickey on four straight pitches. Fair ball. And Mick's going to get at least a double out of this one. It hit the wall and almost stopped a weird bounce off that wall and Rivers gets the first Yankee hit of the ball game. A double past George Scott. Let's watch it again. Rivers down on that crouch strides into it and drills it just past Scott fair ball by about a foot or so. He saw the ball kick back and not to the right fielder Rice so he started running hard again and made it easily into second base. All right, each team now with a base hit. Except that Boston's was a homer by Yastrzemski. Now Thurman Munson, who struck out his first time up. So with two out, Rivers will be running with the crack of the bat. And Yaz is cheating a couple of steps in left field, hoping to uh, throw Rivers out on a base hit. And Munson fouls it back on the roof out of play, strike one. Thurman figures he's going to continue to get that slider from uh, Torres. He kind of walked up on that pitch. Block again by Fisk. That ball bounced about three feet in front of home plate. One on one. Mike Torres. Try to relax out there. It's tough. Thurman getting that neck loosened up. Thurman went with the slider just a little late, landed into the seats. One ball, two strikes on the Yankee captain. Thurman's got to think now with Torres come back with that slider again, knowing now that Thurman will try to go to right field with it, or will he come in on him, try to throw one by him? Pitcher has the advantage right now with a one and two count, of course. He can fool around with a couple of pitches. Thurman hits straight away. That's when he's dangerous. He held up a little high, two and two. Boy, Torres had a little mustard on that pitch. He had it by Thurman, but a little bit high. Count is even at two and two with two out. Red Sox in front, one nothing, top of the third. And the all important game for the American League East Divisional title. Struck him out again, and Fisk has to throw to first, and they get Munson. That ball hit the dirt. At the end of two and a half innings, the Red Sox won, and the Yankees nothing. Well, the co-winners of the American League Pitcher of the Week Award for the past week announced here at Fenway Park. Ed Figueroa of the Yankees and Dennis Eckersley of the Boston Red Sox, both of whom became 20 game winners for the first time in their career. And that's always a big thrill. Right now, the boomer, George Scott, batting 230 on the year. 
And Guidry's pitch high, ball one. Scott ended the year with 15 doubles, four triples, 12 homers, 54 runs batted. And I shouldn't say ended the year because these stats count for the regular season. Deep to center. Rivers will not get this one. And it's off the wall. And a double for Scott as he missed a home run. They have hit some shots off Guidry. Rivers played that very well. And now Mickey's going to come in for glasses, I believe, Frank. I don't know whether he even saw that ball or not. Ball is well hit. Rivers there realizes it's going to be over his head. He did see it. Got it back in. The Bryce Scott was not a little closer to second base, although that ball was well hit. Yep. Mickey now might be coming in for his helmet. I don't know whether anybody threw anything or is it his glasses? No, it is glasses. He mad. He threw glasses down on the ground, two of them. You know, he might have had problems with that, Frank, because it did hit near the base of the wall. I thought the ball was catchable, really, Phil. I don't know. I don't think uh, Rivers saw it at first. And no, you're right. Not at first. Then, as you say, he played it well as he saw it was going. We look at it again. Now, watch where this ball hits. Right there. It looks like he's in the side. Right. Now, watch where it hits. Right there. It, was, it was catchable. Oh, he's yes. He's gotten a good break and run back on it. All right. Nobody out now. I'm sure that, well, I shouldn't say I'm sure, but Broham's job is to get Scott over to third, and the Yankees will have to look for the bunt. He squares and bunts. It's a good one. Munson started for third, throws to first, and they get Broham on a beautiful sacrifice bunt. I've got to Scott. wonder if they might not have had that play at third base, though, Phil. You know? It's, you saw Munson throw his hands up in the air. He started to throw. We're watching. Let's watch again. Munson out there quickly looks to third, then double bumps and throws on to first base. On a play like that, uh, the pitcher has to help the catcher out, I believe, tell him where to throw the ball. Yep. All right, again, the Yankees have to look for a possible squeeze bunt. They got to bring the infield in. The Red Sox lead 1-0 with one out in the bottom of the third. Rick Burleson struck out his first time up. Little low ball one. No run Guidry and a little bit of a jam. The two hits off Guidry have been bullets. The homer by Yaz and the double by Scott. A little low, 2 and nothing. Burleson wants the umpire to look at the ball. He's going to throw it out of play. All right, Guidry has two strikeouts in the ball game. A bouncer, they're going to hold Scott at third. And Nettles throws Burleson out, and that is a big, big play. Two outs. Scott remains at third base, and the batter now, Jerry Remy. Once again, the Yankee infield has to be alert. This kid can bunt, can handle the bat well. Rivers playing very shallow in center. And slightly towards left center field on the left-hand batter, Remy. Strike one, a breaking pitch, nicked the corner. Remy didn't think so. Whoa. Just missed one of one. Strike two, and that kind of a delayed call by the plate umpire Don Denkinger. Again, Remy a little unhappy. Three very close pitches. All three could have gone either way. One ball, two strikes. Fly ball, and let's see, Rivers and White. White calls and makes the catch. Frank Messer will carry you along the next three. At the end of three, Red Sox one, Yankees nothing. Let's join us, and Bill, we've seen some clutch pitching on both sides early in this ball game. Torres looks like he's got an excellent slider. He got Munson twice with that slider. I don't know how long he can get away with two pitches, though. Frank, he's throwing that fastball and the slider. One key point here, that uh, shadow 
prior to the ball game, the Yankees were complaining they couldn't see well in uh, batting practice. And as that shadow moves out toward the mound, I think both teams once again will have trouble seeing the baseball. Of course, that'll be in the Red Sox' favor because they already lead one to nothing. So important to get that early score, especially in a ball game like this. Lou Pinella leads off for the Yankees as we go to the fourth. Lou grounded out to the third baseman Brohammer. Strike one. Red Sox one run two hits the Yankees no runs one hit. And it's off the glove a Burleson a base hit for Panella. Now Lou's now hitting 12 straight and he continues to hit. Let's watch it again the pitch is right down the middle and Panella chops it past Brohammer. See the ball hit in Burleson's webbing and bounced out base hit for Lou Panella. But I'll hit that ball just like he did the first time up only he got it to the left side of the third baseman where he could not reach it. Chopped down on the ball the first time up and grounded right to Brohammer. Reggie Jackson missed a home run with the wind blowing against him. I think that wind held his ball in play in the first inning. Now the wind is blowing toward left field. As it is turned around since the start of the game. Ball one. There was a breaking ball. I think that's the first curve ball that Torres has thrown all afternoon. He's been throwing that hard slider inside and that hard high fastball. Panella is down at first. Nobody out. Red Sox lead one nothing. He hit it well, but Rice is there and picks it off. Rice made a good throw back to first base. Well, you can't hit the ball any harder than that, Frank Messer. The Red Sox fortunate that they evidently had the book on Jackson Hyde Rice just where he should be. Bang, right there. He didn't get under the ball. Had he gotten under it, the ball might have hit that Prudential building about five miles from here. I'll tell you, Rice made a strong throw back to Scott at first base, trying to double Pinella off. Jim Rice, not noted for his outfield play, noted for his bat. Well, he's made two good plays. He has. Made a good play on Bucky Dent running into right center field back in the third inning. He's the only one that could have caught that ball. Good defensive book. Right field's a tough field here in Boston, too. It is the Sunfield. Greg Nettles takes the ball. <laughs> he shade Nettles just a bit to the right side. Vanilla at first, one out. Out in front of it and fouled it back. Took a little off that pitch. Mike Torres, his 36th start. Pitched 243 innings in his first 35 starts, 267 hits. Struck out 116, walked 96 men. Really brought his earned run average down, even though he had a bad losing string late in the season. And the RA well over four for most of the year. Nettles takes him the other way foul. One ball and two strikes. Nettles popped up. To the shortstop, his first time at bat on a half swing. Red Sox are leading one to nothing on a Yastrzemski home run. Popped him up again in his shallow left, and again the shortstop Burleson is there. Well, Torres twice has pitched tough to Nettles. This ball will be inside, Frank. Uh, Fisk gave the sign of the fastball inside. He gets it right in there, right there. Nettles got it in on the bat just a little bit too much and popped it up. I don't think you can consistently pitch Nettles there, especially as a ball game wears along and that fastball loses a little bit of the velocity. Chris Chambliss steps in. Chambliss hit the ball hard, but right at George Scott. He had a good swing, fouled it back.
Yankees have two hits a double by Rivers and a single by Pinella. They've had Rivers at second base twice but unable to score him. Both times Munson struck out as the next hitter. The shortstop Burleson has it right at the bag and steps on second for the unassisted force. At the end of three and a half, it's Boston one, New York nothing. Well, now's the time to start thinking about season tickets for the 1979 Yankee games. Be assured of the best seats for all the action next year by having your own full season or combination plan. For more information, call group and season sales at 212-293-6000. That number again? 212-293-6000. Well, we see the flag, Frank Messer, blowing a bit toward uh, left field instead of toward Rice, uh, right field as it was earlier in the ball game. And I think each time Rice has been up, <laughs> that wind has turned around and blown toward left. You're absolutely right, Bill. That was the first time it turned around when Rice came to bat in the first inning. But nonetheless, Gidry struck him out. Gidry struck out two of the three hitters in the first. He has not struck out a man since. Yastrzemski hit a home run to right. Scott has doubled. Those are the only two Boston hits. Foul back out of play on the right side. Perfectly clear day here in Boston. Jim Rice has had an outstanding year. Just really an almost unbelievable year. Out of play. Kittry's the kind of pitcher, Frank, that gives Rice a lot of trouble. He can't afford to wait back on the ball. He's got to hurry because he knows that ball is coming in there 95, 96 miles an hour. He's a better hitter when he can sit back and wait on the ball. That will be a foul ball and it's going to be out of play. Ron Guidry throughout the year pitched on four days rest. Now he is pitching on three days rest as it comes down to the end of the campaign. Bucky Dent. Bad throw at Chambliss had to tag Rice. Bucky Dent has had trouble with his throws quite a few occasions this year. And let's watch it again. It's a grass cutter to Bucky Dent. And he's got plenty of time. Comes up with the ball here. Throws it high. Now Lucky Chambliss keeps that ball in the first baseman's net. Sometimes you hit that like that and the ball flies out. Especially a big guy like Rice running. All right, there is one away. And the batter, Carl Yastrzemski, gets quite an ovation. His home run leading off the second, the only score in this game. Ball one. It was his 17th home run of the year. 39 years old, just signed a new five year contract. He had, How he had many said, years, you say? I told five years. He had said that next year might be his last year, but evidently has changed his mind. year playing and four years of PR like Willie McCovey got with the San Francisco Giants. <laughs> I don't know what the fine print says but I tell you, you got a guy like Yastrzemski around I think you give him just about anything he wants. Well, Father Tom eventually catches up with you though you when you can't contribute anymore. I think he has to know when he should quit though probably better than I. Two balls and two strikes on him. Ted Williams played into his 44th year. Stan Musial played through his 44th year. Of course, Ted had all those years out for military service. And what that would add to or subtract from. <laughs> had him way out in front, he fouled it off. Yastrzemski has played hurt a lot this year. He's got a back problem. You know, a bad Bill, hand too. Yeah. You know Bill White the team that's benefiting sitting back a lot of chuckling over the whole thing the Kansas City Royals. 
Out in front again, pulled a foul over the roof. Royals know that whether they meet the Yankees or the Red Sox, they'll come in one pitcher shy for the championship series, having to play this extra game. They've already uh, put out their pitching rotation to the Royals. Leonard Gurr and Splittor in the first three ball games. He struck him out. Oops. Yes, tried to check the swing and could not. Gidry gets his third strikeout. I'd heard Whitey Herzog uh, say earlier that if he played the Red Sox, he would start Leonard, but if he played the Yankees, he would start split off in the first game. The note sheet here in Boston says, as Bill gave to you, Leonard Gore and split off. Here's Carlin Fisk, an invaluable man to the Boston Red Sox. He's played hurt a lot this year, an outstanding catcher. Good hitter. 283 average, 20 homers, 88 runs batted in. Strike one. And now you see the shadow Bill's talking about from that angle. You can see the shadow coming out toward the home plate area. Another inning or so. The hitters will be in the shade. And the pitcher will be thrown out of the bright sunshine. Advantage pitcher. No, I talk about that so often, Frank, because it's so important. You know, as a hitter, you hate to see those shadows move in on you. Of course, if you're a pitcher, you don't mind. No. I think pitchers rather see every game start about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, wouldn't they? 3 <laughs> 30. No ball, two strike count on Carlton Fisk. Two outs, none on. Center field, Rivers, can he get to it? He can, and he makes the catch deep. Three up, three down, into four. It's Boston one, the Yankees nothing. We go to the fifth inning here at Fenway Park. The Yankees will bat Roy White, Brian Doyle, and Bucky Dent, the lower third of the batting order against Torres. Better is still in sunshine. The shadows get closer and closer. Impossible to get a ticket for this ball game. Stadium completely sold out. Roy White struck out his first trip. Torres has walked one, struck out three, allowed two hits. Double by Rivers and a single by Pinella. Two balls and no strikes on Roy White. Roy's made such a great contribution down the stretch, Bill, and you I don't I, I know I like to see the veteran player come through in clutch situations. No, he has done that. Didn't get a chance to play early, but he has really made his presence felt lately. No question about it. That's ball three. Three and oh. And he has to duck away from ball four. Second walk by Torres. Torres walked Rivers leading off the ball game. Mickey stole second and died there as the next three hitters could not move him up. Munson struck out, Pinella grounded out, and Jackson flied out. Boy. This is the third Boy. inning out of five. The Yankees have had the leadoff man on. Brian Doyle is the batter. Slap hitter chokes way up on the bat handle. Strike one. Brian's older brother played right here for the Red Sox. Roy White at first, Scott holding. White's going, and it's hit sharply to the second baseman, Remy, who throws out Doyle. Had they not had White going, that would have been a double play. But White broke, and no throw to second base. Okay. 
there. Here it is again. Brian hits the ball hard on one hopper to Remy, who thinks about going to second, but changes his mind and makes a sure play at first base. The Yankees have hit the ball hard, but they've hit the ball right at people. I don't think any ball has been a harder hit all uh, afternoon. The ball Reggie Jackson hit to no. Jim Rice. You don't hit a ball any harder than that. Lucky that up, fly to right his first trip. And pops this one up out behind second. Burleson is there. Fights off the sun as he makes the catch. And there are two down. Now this is going to be a little uh, some kind of confrontation here Frank Messer with uh, Mike Torres pitching to Mickey Rivers. Mike's been trying to get away with two pitches. The fastball which he normally leads the uh, batter off with and he throw it up up and in on you to break you off. Then he'll throw you the slider. We watch this uh, play again with Dent popping it up. Mickey a pretty good fastball hitter. He sat over there and he's seen the Torres has thrown only one change up all ball game and one curveball. And let's see what Torres does with him. First of all, they're going to move Scott back. They're not going to play him in shallow at first base. Mickey has walked and doubled. Slaps it left side. Roy White almost hit by it, and they make the throw to third, and White is out. Rellison to Brohammer, and Roy White is out at third on the fielder's choice to retire the side at the end of four and a half. It's Boston. What of the certainly throws the ball at third. White had to change direction, and he's. I don't know if he ever tagged him or not, but he's called out easily there at third base by the third base umpire Steve Palermo. So heads up play by the Red Sox. It was. You saw Burleson just take a quick glance over to at first base as he fielded that ball and realized his best play was to go for the lead runner, and he got quite easily. He just did. He glanced quickly to first base. His momentum was carrying away from that play, Bill. He would have had to stop, set himself, and throw. Good play by Burleson. All right, we go to the bottom half of the fifth. Freddie Lynn leads off to be followed by Hobson and Scott. Breaking ball misses. Lynn hit the ball deep to center field, and Rivers caught it back in the second inning. Boston leads 1 0. Foul ball. Uh, Johnny Pesky still has good hands. He played in the last American League playoff game here against the Cleveland Indians, along with Cleveland Indian president Al Rosen and the present Cleveland skipper Bob Lemon. That's right. Lem sat on the bench. He was not in that game, but he was in uniform for the Indians. Check swing, ground it right back to Gedry. I believe, uh, as I recall, that game in 1948, Johnny Pesky and Bobby Dorr were the only two Red Sox to get extra base hits in the game, and they were that year considered to be an outstanding hitting ball club. Yeah, but Gene Beard had a pretty good knuckleball. That's right, left-hander. Butch Hobson is the batter. Lou Boudreaux hit a couple of home runs in that game as the playing manager of the Indians. Hobson grounded out to third his first time up. Gidry starts him off with a strike. Now the Heat misses, one and one. Boston leads one to nothing on a second inning leadoff home run by Carl Yastrzemski. Foul back. Ouch, that got Munson. That rising fastball, Frank, and that sinking slider. The catcher gets beaten up quite a bit. Get on top of that slider. Underneath the uh, rising fastball. That will be out of play. Catcher really works at his job. It's not only physical, but uh, it takes a tremendous metal toll. You're blamed for as many long balls as a pitcher. Yeah. <laughs> they probably say you shouldn't have called that pitch. Foul ball. Foul ball. Uh, 
Let's watch it again. Ball is down on Hobson. He goes down on the ball and pulls it. The third base umpire Steve Palermo right on the play. The ball just outside the bag. Nettles diving. Didn't have to get dirty. That's Gedry's favorite two strike pitch. Ball moving down into the right hand hitter. He struck out more men on that pitch this year I think than any other one. But Hobson got enough of it to stay alive. And it is off his glove. Hobson settles for one base as Roy White gets to the ball quickly. Base hit. Let's watch it again. They thought Nettles between hops here. Same kind of pitch up a little bit more. Nettles backs off just a little here, and the ball comes up and it hits the webbing of the glove and doesn't stay in. Hobson decides to hold at first base. I thought he might have had a shot at going to second, but he decided to play it safe. All right, the Red Sox with one out have Hobson on. That is their third hit of the game. George Scott, the batter, doubled off the center field wall his first time up. Strike one. Scott was benched for a while for not hitting. Then when he came back on the lineup, he has been hitting the ball better. One ball and one strike. That one got the plate umpire. Don Deckinger. Ball, two strikes. Struck him out. Gidry gets his fourth strikeout. Boston is leading one to nothing here in the fifth inning. A home run by Yastrzemski in the second, the only scoring in this game. Jack Brohammer sacrificed in the third inning. Following a double by Scott. Ball and a strike. television replays last night when I came into Boston Bill on Brohammer catching the final out of the ball game yesterday for the Red Sox against Toronto you'd think it was the final game of the World Series as elated as he was and as his teammates were three balls and a strike well they hung in Frank just like the Yankees coming from 14 games back they could have given up they did not Red Sox you got to give them credit they hung around when the Yankees blinked they took advantage of it. Gidry just lobs it over there. Mark of two good ball clubs neither one gave up any time during the year. Foul back. Red Sox had the strong first half, the Yankees the strong second half, then Boston came back strong in the last week or so. In the air left field, Roy White will be there. And that retires the side at the end of five. It's Boston one, the Yankees nothing. I'm sorry, go on. I was just going to give the batting order here for the sixth inning, Bill. I was going to say the same thing. They've got the meat of their batting order coming up here against Mike Torres, Mudson, Pinnell, and Jackson. And... Wonder if Mike will continue pitching the same pattern. So far, it's been successful for him. He's only given up two base hits to the Yankees. He's got Munson in two key situations. In the first inning with Rivers at second and nobody out, Torres struck him out. 
in the third inning with Rivers at second and two outs. Torres again struck Munson out. If the Yankees win this game and go on to Kansas City, we will be televising tomorrow night's game here on 11 Alive WPIX at 8 o'clock. And as they say in the trade, no road company, the original cast. Outside of third, strike one on Munson. But right now, the Red Sox have a 1 0 lead built around the home run by Yastrzemski. Foul ball again as Munson is lunging at the pitch. Yep, pitchers. he's got him. Uh, he's throwing that slider, Frank, low and in and low and away. And Thurman, obviously, I think, is having trouble picking the baseball up. Well, now, Bill, the shadow you talked about before has reached the home plate area. Well, he had trouble before. When he struck out the two times the shadow wasn't there, he was still lunging for the ball. He struck out once on a very bad pitch, low and away. In the dirt. Yep. Try to take that one to right field and foul it away. Well, certain parks just give you trouble. I remember Houston. I never daytime games there, which they seldom played. But in the Astrodome, there was uh, I ran straight out in center field. The sun shone, uh, would shine through there. Never could hit there. That's the way I stood at the plate. Foul this one back. Nobody else had any trouble. <laughs> I think uh, over the course of baseball there have been some parks that hitters could hit in no matter who pitched other parks they couldn't get a base hit in save their life no matter who pitched well, and you think about it you psych yourself out. All right Torres has Munson down the balls two strikes. Check swing did he check it. He did not he's called out. He's called out by the first base umpire, Jim Evans. Munson is called out by Evans. Here it is. Good ball away from Munson going down. And the bat crossed the plane of the plate. Sometimes that's. One of the points they look at, and evidently Jim Evans felt that that was far enough to call Munson out. Fourth strikeout for Mike Torres. He has made Munson look bad at the plate in this game. Struck him out three times in a row now. Lou Pinella, one for two. Center field. Lynn is after it. Never took his eye off the ball, and he's got it. He had to go a long way for that when it was hit hard. Never took his eye off of it. Now Scott's saying something to Mike Torres as Reggie Jackson stands and he wants to be a little more careful with Jackson. He grooved the fastball to Reggie last time up. And Jackson got it all, but didn't get under the ball. Just hit it solidly and drove it to a Jim Rice in right field. They're really playing it safe. Frank Scott's going to, it's just a sixth inning, and Scott's going to guard the line at first base. Normally, you wait until the eighth, ninth inning to do that. And the dirt bounces back on the screen. First time up, Reggie had a fly ball to left field. The wind was blowing from left to right at that time. And I've got to feel the wind held the ball up. It was caught right at the foot of the wall by Yastrzemski, a towering fly. Then Reggie lined out to the right fielder, Bryce. Two balls, no strikes. Sox are out in front, one to nothing. 
We're in the sixth inning. Mike Torres has allowed the Yankees only two hits. Two balls, two strikes. Well, you very seldom hit a home run, Frank, when you swing that way. Normally, you keep your eye on the ball and just carry it through, and that's when you hit the ball well. When you <laughs> end up spinning around like that, you very, very, very seldom hit the home run. The pitcher almost has to hit your bat. Ball low and in. Torres trying to buy one. The second breaking ball he's thrown this ball game. He can get in trouble now if he walks Jackson. That'll's next up. He's got a pitch from the stretch. Should he not get Jackson? He's got him on the ground ball to Remy. And at the end of five and a half. Boston won New York nothing. Ball one. Chambliss at charge. Nettles broke back to cover third base. Open of a force play. Or rather, a, not a force play, but a play out there. Gibbery falls behind 2 0 to Remy. So the runner will advance. Nettles throws him out to Chambliss. 5 3 sacrifice moves Burleson over to third. <laughs> Remy did what he wanted, made Nettles field that ball. So no chance of a play back at third. That's how they feel about Jim Rice here in Boston. Infield is in with a runner at third, one out. You gotta play him in tight. Fouled it off Munson, strike one. In all probability, Jim Rice will be the most valuable player in the American League. I have to feel he and Gidry will finish one, two. Not necessarily in that order, but the leaning is toward Rice. Cannot get it. It's a base hit. And Boston goes out in front two to nothing. It is again, Frank. Looks like he might have handcuffed Rice, but this fellow's strong. He got the back way in and then got the head of the bat out. Open his arms up and get a good swing, but he's so strong that he just ripped that ball in center field. He really did, as you can see it on the replay, just muscled that ball. Pure strength. Yes, Tremsky up, one out, Rice at first. Yes, Tremsky homered leading off the second. He struck out in the fourth. Boston leads 2 0. Ball on a strike. It's Dremski batting 277 for the year. Now 17 homers. Rice at first. Two balls, one strike to Carl. Now 
Now the plate umpire will take a look at the baseball. Don Dankinger calls for it. Rubs it out and gives it back. Red Sox now have two runs on five hits and lead two nothing. Strike to Yastrzemski. Oh. Had him going for a big breaking ball. Well, what happens, Frank, as you get older, you, you become a one pitch hitter. You either hit the fastball or hit the curve. You got to make up your mind hit one or the other. It's hard to handle both as uh, the older you get. That's why I question uh, whether Carl really wants to play five more years. Plus, you you become more susceptible to injuries as you go along. Runner goes. Bouncer to Chambliss, no play to suck, and he'll take it back to first to get Yastrzemski. Two down. That will bring Bob Levin out. They'll discuss Carlton Fisk with Lynn on deck and first base open. Would you rather pitch to Fisk or pitch to Lynn? <laughs> Bob Levin with his very low key approach to baseball. Making the decision as to whether or not to pitch to Fisk. He's also looking out in right field. He's got Gossie's throwing out there. I don't think uh, that Lem wants to make a pitching change here, but no, he isn't. He's going to go on back. Well, in the last two American League playoffs to decide the season winner, Bob Levin has watched the games from the dugout in 1948 as a pitcher for the Cleveland Indians, in 1978 as the manager of the Yankees. In this same ballpark. And it looks like they're going to put Fisk on. That was the decision they made out on the mound. They would rather pitch to the left hand hitting Lynn. This will be the first walk given up by Gidry, and it is an intentional walk. Gidry has struck out four men. will step in with runners at first and second. Ball four is thrown and Fisk goes to first. Runners first and second, two outs. Boston leading two nothing here in the bottom half of the sixth. Fred Lynn the batter. Lynn in the second inning had a ball to deep center field and Mickey Rivers ran down and caught. Then in the fifth, he grounded back to the pitcher, Gidry. Boston in front, 2-0. Two, two on, two out in the bottom half of the sixth. foul well back in the seats and left one ball one strike foul ball on the right side and it's one and two First and second, two out. Three balls and two strikes. Make that two balls and two strikes on Lynn. Two and two. And now it is three. 
three and two and the runners will be going. Rice will break from second Fisk from first. Field, Pinella's after it, and he's got it. What a catch by Pinella! Made a basket catch going back toward the corner, and that retires the side. Bill White will carry along. End of six. Boston two, New York nothing. Inning now, and Greg Nettles will lead off against Mike Torres. Nettles has been up twice against his former teammate and popped up to shortstop both times. It'll be Nettles, Chamless, and then Roy White. Curves a strike. Torres has not used a curveball too often this afternoon. He's only thrown it three or four times. He's gone basically with the fastball and the slider. One or two change-ups. So far, he's pitched an excellent ball game. Good ball game, giving the Yankees just two base hits. That's in the right field. Should be easy for the right fielder Jim Rice. One away. And the batter is Chris Chambliss, the Yankee first baseman. He lined hard to first base to George Scott in the second inning and forced a runner in the fourth inning. So Chambliss is 0 for 2. He's batting 273 now with a dozen home runs and 90 runs batted in. One on Chambliss. Base hit for Chambliss as he goes the other way. And Yastrzemski will block the ball and get it in, and Chambliss will hold it first. That's the Yankees' first base hit off Mike Torres since the fourth inning when Pinella let off with a single. So Chambliss on at first with one away. And here's Roy White. He uh, struck out and walked. White's 0 for 1 in this ball game, batting at 267. White has had a great second half. Did not get much chance to play in the first half, but has really come on and done an excellent job with the Yankees here in the second half of the season. Base hit for White. Chambliss will hold at second base. So back to back singles by Chris Chambliss and Roy White. The Yankees have two men on base with just one away here in the seventh inning. And Andy Hassler, a left hander, gets up and starts warming up in the Boston Red Sox bullpen. And he's joined by right hander Bob Stanley. So Stanley, the right hander, on the left of your screen, and the left hander Andy Hassler. As Fisk wants to talk to Mike Torres. It's like we're going to get a pinch hitter for Brian Doyle. Jim Spencer being sent out by Bob Lemon. So Jim Spencer will bat for Brian Doyle. Yankees down 2 0. They need the long ball here in the seventh inning. Spencer batting 228 overall. He's been up 149 times, has 34 base hits, seven home runs, 24 runs batted in. As a pinch hitter, he's batting 304, seven base hits, 23 times up. With a home run, nine runs batted in. Spencer normally a pretty good fastball hitter. And here comes Don Zimmer, the Red Sox skipper. Now Zimmer and Lemon beginning to play a little chess here at Fenway Park. Zim, since Torres has now given up four base hits, might be just telling him to stay away from that low fastball with Spencer. Maybe keep the ball out over the plate, use the breaking ball. Or let's see. Does he want the left-hander? Evidently not. 
fist suspense and goes back to home plate. So he's going to let Torres stay in the ball game. Pitch suspension. Red Sox have a two nothing lead here in the seventh inning. Yankees have runners at first and second and one away as Zimmer goes back to the Red Sox bench. Spencer has won four games for the Yankees this year with base hits. He got a fastball and fouled it back and Fist certainly did not like that pitch. He'll go out and talk to Torres. I think he threw a pitch that uh, Mike threw a pitch that Fist certainly did not like. He got that fastball in there. Spencer got a good rip at it. No balls and a strike. Probably get Fred Stanley in at second base, bottom half of this inning. Willie Randolph is here. He's in uniform. Of course, he's still bothered by that pulled hamstring in his left leg. Low. That's more like what Fisk wants. He wants a breaking ball. Ball and a strike on Spencer. In the dirt again with the curve ball. It's two and one. Now he's got to come in with the fastball or the slider. Oh, the count. Two balls. One strike on Jim Spencer. Chris Chambliss is at second base. Roy White at first. There's one out here in the top of the seventh. The Red Sox lead two nothing. In the left field, Jastrzemski's right there. Yeah, has had him played perfectly. Two outs. Now the batter's Bucky Dent, the Yankee shortstop. He's fly to right and popped to short. Dent's over two. He got a key base hit here against Denny Eckersley. When the Yankees won four in a row here last time they played in Fenway Park. Eckersley had two strikes on him. This is another key situation for Bucky Dent. Runners at first and second, two outs. Yankees down two nothing. Two low ball one. Torres has given up back to back singles by Chambliss and White here in the seventh inning. But he got pinch hitter Jim Spencer and he's down on no one ball no strikes to a Bucky Dent. Fouled off his foot. It's one and one. Bucky's given up wearing that protection on his left ankle. That was a lot of balls down there. He had been wearing a shin guard just where he's touching. Gene Monahan, the Yankee trainer, now out talking to Dent. Just off the left end step. Right there. And we'll get the ethyl chloride out and spray it. Dick Hauser, the Yankee third base coach, in there looking. That's only temporary relief. Sometimes I wonder if it's relief at all. <laughs> Here's again, Dent getting on top of the ball right off the left end step, and that's Marks. 
the bat boy brings Bucky a new bat and he'll exchange bats. The counts one and one. Two outs and two on the Red Sox lead at two nothing in the seventh inning here at Fenway. Deep to left. Yastrzemski will not get it. It's a home run. A three-run home run for Bucky Dent. The Yankees now lead it by a score of three to two. Bucky Dent has just hit his fifth home run of the year into the screen. And look at that Yankee bench, led by Bob Lemon. Big Cliff Johnson out there. And a happy Bucky Dent. Yankees now lead three to two. Well, the last guy on the ball club you'd expect to hit a home run. Just hit one into the screen. Bucky Dent. Now comes Miller time when you've got the time to celebrate something special. Head for the best tasting beer you can find. Miller Highline. There's that ball going up on the screen. And Mickey Rivers just fouled one back. Chambliss scored. Roy White scored. Bucky Dent floated home. And the Yankees lead it three to two. Rivers has walked, doubled, and forced a runner. One and one. Oh, Bucky Dent hitting White. What has to be the biggest home run of his career. Lifted one on the screen against Mike Torres with two runners on. And the Yankees lead by one. Curveballs to strike one and two. Yankees now have three runs on five base hits. The Red Sox two runs on five base hits. Two and two and the Yankees have Rich Gossage loosing up in the bullpen. See the Red Sox will have Hobson Scott and Brohammer two right handers and a left hander do in in the bottom of this inning. And we might get Gossage in the ball game. Get repitching with just three days rest. That'll kick foul. Better, yep, and Fisk hurries and picks it up before it goes back there. Two and two. <laughs> Don't ask me to say anything. I've been holding my breath, Bill White. I'm not going to ask you to say anything. How'd you like that ball up on that screen? Oh, you know, I was in the press room with all those Red Sox fans, and when Bucky hit it, I let out three holy counts, and I thought Frank Malzone was going to bite me on the ankle. <laughs> oh. Three balls, two strikes on Mickey Rivers. Big home run by Bucky Dent. Foul, still three and two. No, I think Scooter had the Yankees had an experienced shortstop. Dent might not have gotten a chance to bat there. You know, you're absolutely right. They had to go for pinch hitters there, but they are strapped with the injury to Willie Randolph. Stanley will play second base, yep. and the only other shortstop is Domingo Ramos. Denny Sherrill was signed as a shortstop. Well, Rivers walks, and that's going to be all for Torres. Don Zimmer coming out of the uh, dugout and it looks like he waved the right hand. He wants Bob Stanley. So Rivers walks. And Mike Torres will take a walk. He has pitched a pretty good ball game, except here in this inning. He'd given the Yankees just two base hits coming into the seventh inning. He got Nettles on a fly ball, then gave up a single to left field to Chris Chambliss. Roy White single to center. Jim Spencer batting for Brian Doyle. Fly to Carl Yastrzemski in left field. Then Bucky Dent. Lifted one onto the screen in left field to give the Yankees a three to two lead. And Mike Torres gets a hand as he leaves. Jacket. I think Mike certainly wanted to beat his former major. He'd said a few things about him over the year. Career-wise against the Yankees, Torres has had trouble. He's only won one game and lost five. 
And here in 78, he's one and three. So Torres gives way to Bob Stanley, who will pitch to Thurman Munson. I know Munson's one guy that's glad Torres is gone. Boy, he really, I never saw Munson look that bad at the plate and strike out three times and twice on check swings where he tried to check himself. I think Thurman, like a lot of the hitters this afternoon, having trouble picking the bat up, picking the ball up, not the bat. You better keep talking. I'm going to stay to shock, Bill White, so I'm not going to be much help up here. You aren't? Nope. You ought to be happy. Yeah, but I'm like a hen on a hot rock. I don't know whether to jump or sit or, or lay an egg. Yeah. <laughs> you know, at least when you're playing, you can, uh, your energy, you can use it up. But when you're just sitting here biting your nails, well, Stanley's finished. He's making his 52nd appearance for the Boston Red Sox. He's won 15 ball games and lost just two, and he's picked up 10 saves. So he'll pitch to Thurman Munson with Mickey Rivers on at first base and uh, two men out here in the seventh inning with the Yankees leading the Red Sox by a score three to two. The last time Rivers walked back in the first inning, he stole second. He almost threw that one away. He's going to go, right, Bill? I think he's going to go at some point while Munson's up there. Stole his 24th base back in the first inning. <laughs> Hope he didn't hurt himself. Gene Michael concerned. No, he hurt himself if you let Scott hit him with a tag. <laughs> That's what he's got to worry about. Rivers with 24 stolen bases. And he is going. No. And he's safe again at second <laughs> base. As Fisk threw a one hopper to Jerry Remy. Oh, that Rivers is something. Everybody knows. Look at that jump he's got. And Fisk this time bounces one, turns into a good throw. But Rivers just too quick. Well, Mickey down at second base. With his second stolen base of the ball game, he now has 25 on the air. He's only been thrown out five times. Willie Randolph leads the Yankees in stolen bases. He has 36. Of course, he cannot play and just might not play the rest of the year. Should the Yankees hang on and win this ball game? Well, he's stolen 36 bases. He's been caught seven times. Bad Omen scooter, though. Munson swinging through that slider. Yep. He's got to go to right field. That's. Nope. That might be trouble. It's going to fall. Base hit. Rivers will score. Munson will try for two as Lynn bobbles the ball out in left center. And he's there with a double. The Yankees now lead it by a score four to two. That's what I said. He's got to go to right field. <laughs> Here it is again. Yeah. Oh, it didn't look like it was hit that hard. No. But it was in a perfect spot. Right between Yaz and Lynn. There's Lynn having problems picking it up, but Rivers would have scored and Munson would have been in second anyway. Well, that uh, cements the record of Mike Torres. Anything the Yankees get now this inning will be on the record of Bob Stanley as Lou Pinell is a batter. He's bounced out, single, fly to center field. In the right field. And Rice is there. And the side is retired. Yankees score four times in the top of the seventh. And at the end of six and a half, the Yankees four, the Red Sox two. Six and two third innings, five hits, three walks, four strikeouts, and four runs allowed. And Gidry's still out there, William. Yes, he is. And let's see, Gossage still throwing on the bullpen. I don't know why Goose threw all the way through the top of this inning while the Yankees are batting for him. I guess he wants to make sure he's good and loose. Well, Ron Gidry celebrating Air Stanley. Fred Stanley moves in to play second base for Ed Brian Doyle. 
Guidry celebrating being named the co-winner of the Player of the Week in the American League, along with Denny Eckersley, the pitcher for the Boston Red Sox. Butch Hobson bounced the third and single. Oh, he's one for two. Bottom of the seventh, the Yankees ahead 4-2 over the Sox. Two strikes. <laughs> A little fella from Lafayette, Louisiana. Pitching with just three days rest. Just missed outside. One and two. Got him. Stayed away from him. Struck out Hobson. One away here in the seventh inning. That's strikeout number five for Gidry. And he now has. Let's see. 243 plus five. 248. And again, a reminder that everything that happens in this game is added to the statistics of this year. Oh, Ron Guidry now will pitch to George Scott, the first baseman. That might go through. It'll go through the right side. They had Stanley set up playing Scott to pull. He hit a ground ball through the right side. His second base hit in the ball game. So he's there at first base with one away. And here comes Bob Lemon with Jack Rohammer due on. Up they had uh, Bob Bailey out there. I don't know, I don't know if Bailey had been announced I or not. I'm sure he had. I don't think Lemon would make the change unless Bailey were announced. Uh, well, he wants Gossage anyway. Gossage is coming on. We did not hear Bob Bailey announced. Of course, if he has not been announced, he's not officially in the ball game. Now Zimmer's going to come out and he's going to ask Dinkinger whether or not Bailey had been officially put in the ball game as Gidry leaves. And Dinkinger. While Gidry's leaving, this conversation going on on the third base side, Dinkins had told Zimmer that he had already waived Bailey in the ballgame, so he's officially in the ballgame. Well, there's George Steinbrenner applauding the man who's putting all that money in the bank for him, Ron Gidry, and the Yankee bench congratulating Gidry. He worked six and a third innings, giving up six hits. Walked only one man, and that was intentionally. Last inning, struck out five and has allowed two runs. So Gidry cannot be the losing pitcher. He's either the winning pitcher or no decision. No, Gidry 11 must have talked on the bench, and Gidry probably told him, Skip, I'm getting a little bit tired. If they get a runner on base. Perhaps you'd better uh, come out and get me. Yeah, I guess you're right, Bill. That's why Gossage continued to warm up so he would be ready. I didn't think Gidry would start this inning because no, Gossage I was throwing all the while the Yankees were batting and scoring their four runs at the top of the inning. And we thought that he'd come on beginning of the inning, but Lemon uh, tried to sneak through with him. He got Hobson on strikes, but then giving up the opposite field single to Scott, Lem decided to go to a well rested Goose Gossage. Well, these conditions ought to be pretty good for the goose and Bailey's going to have to bat. So Bob Bailey who had been waved into the ball game officially by Don Dinkinger now will bat for Jack Brohammer. Looks a little out of shape doesn't he Bill. <laughs> Beatles been around a while. Yeah. I knew him when he was just uh, 16. No, he's about 17, 18. Got a lot of money from the Pirates. Put it all in California real estate. That's mm. why he's got that big. Uh, <laughs> big what? Well, big <laughs> bank account. <laughs> you got out, I of that? got out of that one. Yeah. Out of play, it's one and one.
Bailey has always been a pretty good high fastball hitter. Never did like the breaking ball. Of course, Gossage will throw him mostly heat. That was a good heater. A ball and two strikes on Bailey. You saw George Scott at first base is one away. Yankees leading four to two with the Red Sox batting in the bottom half of the seventh inning. Gossage leads the American League and saves with 26. Call strike three. Just caught him looking. Throws him right at home play. Two outs. I think Zim got finessed that time, Scooter. Right. Had he kept Bailey back a little uh, in the dugout, he might have been able to hit Brohammer sure. against Gossage. Brohammer or that kid Hancock or some other left-hand batter. But he still could have sent Hancock up for Bailey, but he would have lost two men. Yep. Here's Burleson. He has struck out, bounced a third, doubled, and scored. Burleson is one for three. So right one on Burleson. Yankees lead four to two, scoring four big runs top of this inning. Highlighted by a three-run home run by Bucky Dent, his fourth, fifth home run of the year, and the biggest one of the year. Two strikes on Burleson. Perfect pitch. Came inside with the fastball on the corner, then went outside. Fastball on the corner, down around the knees. Ball gets by Munson. Looked like he tried to throw a breaking pitch there that time, Bill, and really got away from him. Either crossed Munson up or weird pitch. Thurman's going to be charged with a pass ball. And I watch this. Now, Munson wants it outside. Watch Gossage where it goes. Just look at Thurman. He reacted very slowly, never thinking the ball to be that far inside. Well, it's a ball and two strikes on Burleson. Bucky Dent charging. He's got time. Sides retired. No runs. One base hit, a man left on base. At the end of seven, the Yankees four, the Red Sox two. We've got a new third baseman for the, the Boston Red Sox. Frank Duffy comes on to play third base for Jack Brohammer. Bob Bailey had pinch hit for Brohammer and struck out. Bottom of last inning. Now Reggie Jackson will lead off against Bob Stanley here in the eighth. The Yankees lead four to two. Jackson is over three. He's hit the ball hard once and almost looped one on the wall in the first inning. Wind blowing uh, toward right field, held the ball up. Time for Yastrzemski to pick it up. He lined hard to Rice in the fourth and bounced the second in the sixth. One and zero on Jackson. Two and zero as Stanley tries to keep the ball away. There's Duffy, the third baseman. That's out of play. Two balls and a strike on Jackson. Oh, that's a high oh. drive to center. Let's see. That ball is. It's out of here. The Yankees lead it five to two. Jackson, a towering drive straight away center field. Holy cow, did he hit that? Nine mile. Look at that Yankee bench. What a comeback by this team that has come back all year long, Bill. Yes, sir. Jackson's 27th home run of the year, and he now has 97 runs batted in. And now comes Miller time, when you've got the time to celebrate something special. Head for the best-tasting beer you can find, Miller High Life. And now Zimmer's back out the mound again. He's got Hassler, Andy Hassler, left-handed throwing along with Dick Drago, and that's going to be all for Stanley. Oh, Stanley pitched the three men, gave up a double uh, to Munson, driving in a run. He got Penelope the third out. Here's a home run by Jackson. Boy, this is really high, Bill. This is unbelievable. Right out over the plate. Oh. 
Lynn knew it all the time. Well, the left-hander, as we watch Jackson circle the bases again, well, he's happy right there. <laughs> One thing I can say about Reg, he, uh, look at that happy Yankee bench. He gets around. He takes a long time leaving oh, home plate. Oh, yes. But once he, he starts, he gets around. Yep. Once he starts running, you're right. But he throws that bat down and admires it, which you can't blame him, because when he hits them, they're tape measure jobs. And you know, for Jackson, that's his 27th home run. That ties him now with Greg Nettles for the uh, team lead in home runs. As we mentioned, all the averages in today's game count on the regular season, even though it is an extra game in the schedule. So Andy Asler will come on now and pitch to Greg Nettles. Yankees have Nettles, Chambliss do in. They're both left-handed hitters in the switch hitting Roy White. So the Yankees now lead it five to two. The home run by Jackson, as Bill mentioned, is 27th of the year, and the Yankees' seventh base hit in this ball game. Now I have five runs on seven base hits. The Red Sox two runs on six base hits. Hassler has done well against the Yankees. Overall this year Hassler is making his 24th appearance. His 13th relief appearance. He's won three ball games and lost five, and he's picked up one save. So the Yankees striking with a long ball the last two innings. A three run home run by Bucky Dent with two outs in the seventh, giving the Yankees a three to two lead, and a solo shot leading off here in the eighth by Reggie Jackson. And the Yankees lead five to two. And the batter's Greg Nettles. He's popped a short twice and fly to right field. Nettles with 27 home runs, 93 runs batted in. Strike one on Nettles. For the Red Sox, bottom of this inning, it'll be Jerry Remy, Jim Rice, and Carl Yastrzemski against Rich Gossage. He checked the swing. It's one and one. Yankees with a little breathing room. Now he call that a strike. I think he did. He finally Steve called a delayed Palermo. strike. Yeah. They didn't ask right away. Well, it's two strikes on Nettles. One and two. The ball wasn't really that close. Must be tough to pick up, Bill. I think it is. That's the reason Munson's having uh, so much trouble. Thurm waits on the ball well, so yeah. normally he would just foul the pitch off, but Thurm uh, hadn't come close till he doubled in a run last inning. Two and two on Nettles. Got him. Nettles goes down swinging for the first out. That'll bring on Chris Jam was the first baseman. He's lined the first, forced a runner, and single to left and scored. He started the Yankees on their four run seventh inning after Nettles had flied out. He singled sharply to left field. Went to second base on a single by White after Spencer flied out, batting for Doyle. Bucky Dent hit a ball on the screen in left field. Remy comes up and in time. They'll get an argument there. It's just better back off. And Gene Michael makes sure the Tamas doesn't bump the first base umpire. Good play by Remy. Great play. Lemon started out, but he just wanted to make sure Chambliss was not ejected. Here it is. Never thought Remy had a chance. This is really a great play. Watch how far he dives. Right there. And then comes up. Doesn't waste any time. 
very close, but no time to get kicked out of a ball game. Whoop, stop right there. Yep, <laughs> he nudged him a little, but. Uh, well, Stick been... got in there and got between them. Yep. So there are two outs now, nobody on base. The batter's Roy White. He has struck out, walked, and singled. He's one for two. Remy at second base has another chance. He's got plenty of time here. And the side is retired. Yankees score a run on Reggie Jackson's 27th home run of the year. And at the end of seven and a half, the Yankees five, the Red Sox two. Well, the Red Sox fans haven't given up, Bill White. They're trying to cheer their champions on. The Yankees with a three-run lead. All right, Scooter, here's Jerry Remy. He's 0 for 2. And the goose gets the first pitch in. Remy's fly twice wide in left field, and he sacrificed Burleson over in the sixth, and Burleson scored the Red Sox second run. Two strikes. Gossage coming on last inning, striking out Bob Bailey and getting Burleson on a bounce out in relief of Ron Gidry. Still two strikes on Remy. That's a fair ball. He gets around on this. Ball was down and in, though. Well, Remy leads off with a double here in the eighth inning. The batter's Jim Rice, the right fielder. Rice has struck out. He's bounced out and singled in a run. So he's one for three. Two low ball on Rice. Batting. 316 now. He has 46 home runs, 139 runs batted in. And it's one and one. Much is good. When you take swings like that, you very seldom connect. That's right. It looks good. Everybody who's in Oz, but you very seldom hit it. Reggie had done that earlier, but on the home run, he stayed with the ball. In the right field, Pinella has a long run. But he's there. And the ball be cut off by Bucky Dent. One away. I tell you, that Pinnell is unbelievable. He's not the most graceful outfielder in the world, but when he gets to a ball, he catches. You know that play he made on Lynn was a game saver. Right back in the sixth inning, Lynn drove that ball in the corner, hit it hard, and Pinella fought the wind and the sun, made the catch down around his knees. Here's Carl Yastrzemski, veteran as Homer struck out and bounced to first base. He's one for three. Yeah, has got the Red Sox off and running in the second inning with a solo home run his 17th of the year. That gave him a one to nothing lead. They added a second run in the sixth, but the Yankees came up with four in this three, four in the seventh to take a four to two lead. And they added one in the eighth. Top of this inning. And that's a big run right now, Bill. Two and zero oh on Yastrzemski. Of course, you got to make Yeah swing the bat. Tying run in the on deck circle. That's Carlton Fisk. Here's Pinella. See Lou having trouble with the sun. Just before the pitch, he'll shade his eyes. Two and one on Yastrzemski. Three and one. Here's Fisk. Base hit. Remy will score. And the Yankees now lead 5-3 with Kostinski driving in his second run of the ball game.
I tell you, he has an amazing average bill in playoff games and World Series games. Yastrzemski, always coming through in the clutch. Well, there he is at first base with one away. A few words of Chris Chambliss and the batters, Carlton Fisk. Fisk has flied to left field, flied to center, and he's been intensely passed. He's 0 for 2. And he represents a tying run. These fans not giving up Scooter. They're making a lot of noise here in Boston. Yep. That full foul. Miss getting out in front of a sidearm fastball. That's up in the lights. Way down the left field foul line. One and one. Two strikes. Gossage now just rearing back and throwing that fastball. Still one and two. Ron Guidry went the first six in the third innings, gave up two runs on six base hits. He walked one man intentionally and struck out five. The breaking ball is fouled off. The ball just hung up there. Yeah, but he's a little sharper. He just struck him out because Fisk is looking for nothing but fastballs right now. Down remains one ball, two strikes on Carlton Fisk with one out, one on. Yankees ahead five to three in the bottom of the eighth. That's out of play. Yastrzemski's at first base. See how the Red Sox play it. Probably well, they could play it safe. Keep your ass there. They're playing it safe. Foul outside third. Dossie trying to keep the ball down. And he has walked slowly back to first base. He's had an excellent afternoon. A home run and a single, two runs batted in. Ken Clay up and throwing in the Yankee bullpen. Along with Sparky Lyle. Three and two on Fisk. Here's Yass at first base, one away. Base hit. Oh, the Red Sox runners first and second out with one away. And has a few words with Luz Gossage. Here's the Yankee bench, Yogi Berra. 
Getting the outfield straight away for Fred Lynn. Now here's where if you pitch it's good, you got to reach down to get a little bit extra. Oh, you got it right here. Lynn is wide to center field, bounced to first, and Vanella made a good catch on his drive back in the sixth inning. Runners at first and second, one away. Yankees ahead, 5-3 in the eighth inning. Red Sox trying to come back in the ball game. Strike one. Yankee infield looking for two. Base hit. Yastrzemski will score to lead us down to one. Red Lynn drives in a run. That's the third straight base hit off Bruce Gossett. And here it is again. Lynn going the other way. Waited on the ball well. Jeski scoring easily. Bob Lemon now going out to the mound. I'm sure he's not going to take Gossage out with two right-hand batters coming up, Hobson and Scott, but wants to know what the story is. He's not getting that fastball by those hitters. Oh, well, the Red Sox coming right back here in the eighth inning, scoring two runs. Have narrowed the gap to just one. Now the Yankees lead 5-4 in the batter's Butch Hobson. He's bounced to third, single, and struck out. Hobson is one for three. Runners at first and second, one away. has been getting himself in trouble by getting behind and having to come in with the fastball. And the right field, Pinella glasses down. Almost dropped that ball. Got it on the heel of the glove. There are two outs. It's got to be a tough, tough sky out there in right field. Sun directly in back of us shining right into Pinella's eyes. He just got the ball on the heel of the glove then. Yep. And here's George Scott. He's double, struck out in single, two for three. It was his single back in the seventh inning that knocked out Ron Guidry. Lemon went to Gossage, who promptly struck out Bob Bailey batting for Brohammer and got Brosnan on a bounce out. So here's Scott. Once again, Gossage gets behind. One ball, no strikes. And it's one and one. Scott with a big sweeping swing. Where are you going, Scooter? One ball, one strike on George Scott. Two outs, two on. The Yankees ahead, 5-4 in the bottom of the eighth inning. One and two. Got him! Scott goes down swinging on the side as retired. The Red Sox come back with two runs in the bottom of the eighth. Yankees five, Boston four at the end of eight. One and one. Here's Paul Blair. He'll be batting for Mickey Rivers. That's foul. Lucky trying for a second home run. It's just one foul up on the roof down the left field line. One and two. Well, 
Well, they've got him sitting on top of the roof here at Fenway. I hear the announced crowd of 32. Yeah, I couldn't believe that. Still a ball and two strikes on Dent. Well, they've got to stay away from Rice and Yaz and Fisk. Yeah, got to have a one, two, three inning. <laughs> or pick up a couple of insurance runs mm -hmm. here. Got him. Good breaking ball from Hassler. Vince Scott looking. Two outs. Here's Paul Blair batting for Mickey Rivers. Paul Blair. He'll stay in the ballgame, of course, and go out center field. Blair. Back out of play. Blair on the year batting 169. He's been up 124 times and 73 ball games has 21 base hits, two home runs, and 13 runs batted in. and a strike on Blair. Nineteen forty eight the last time the American League had a playoff. In fact the only other time they've had a playoff. Cleveland Indians came in here and beat Boston. Past the third baseman Duffy base hit for Blair. And out comes Don Zimmer. Munson's due on. Zimmer looks like he wants Drago to come on. He's already made the move. Right-hander Dick Drago will come on and pitch against Munson. You know, watching all this action, Scooter back in Kansas City, the Kansas City Royals. They're happy to see everybody using everybody. The Yankees ah. have had to use Gidry and Gossage, their two best pitchers. And Zimmer's had to go through Torres, Stanley Hassler, now Drago. And that's true. Kansas City is really sitting in the catbird seat for sure. And of course, today the Yankees had hoped to go out there and uh, work out, but the Cleveland Indians changed all their plans. They still hope to go out there, of course, but uh, the game will be played tomorrow night, so they won't have a chance to work out at all. And don't forget, the Yankees hold this one run lead and win this ball game. Every game of the playoffs will be brought to you right here on WPIX 11 Alive. Remember, that'll also be on ABC, but you can hear the regular announcers like Bill White and Frank Messer do the games right here on 11 Alive, because I'm not going to make it. This what? is just too much. I'm too old. I just had my birthday on Monday, and... Uh, I don't know whether I can you look stand better than I've ever seen you oh, look. You're full of baloney. Better than I've ever seen you look. Got a nice birthday you cake. You gave away chorus. <laughs> oh, you got a slab. Bring that up again. Yankees are leading here five to four. I know, but the, and you're happy. The, I'm happy, but the hair is getting grayer. The nails are getting shorter. <laughs> and the stomach is churning. I got agita. You got what? Agita. That's an upset stomach in Italian. Oh. Drago coming on. <laughs> He's making his 37th appearance, his 36th relief appearance. <laughs> He's won four and lost four, picked up seven saves. 
Of course, he's got hit Munson last time the Yankees were in here, Scooter. Got Munson just under the helmet. Yeah, that's true. And you know, it was a uh, little unusual right after that, Drago was talking about what remarkable control he has, and that's why he likes to come in and pressure games because he can throw strikes. And he's going to be facing Munson, as you mentioned. Right now, it's strange this ballpark. The uh, sun is shining only on home plate and out in right field. Well, Drago taking plenty of time getting loose. He's supposed to be limited to just eight throws. And that must be his eighth one there. Thurm Munson will bat against him. Munson has struck out three times and doubled in a run. Got a key RBI double in the seventh inning when the Yankees went ahead four to two over Boston. Thurman had a lot of trouble with Mike Torres. Torres throwing him sinkers down and away. Now he'll bat against Rago with Blair on at first base and two men out in the ninth inning. The Yankees lead five four. And Drago chases Blair back to first base. Hey, what's Scott doing? Picking up dirt, putting it on the ball? <laughs> That's what he did. And giving the ball back to Drago. Say the Delhi used to do that for Whitey Ford? Yeah. Too low ball one. Of course, Ellie would rub it in the dirt. Scuff it up a little bit, give it back to Whitey. He'd throw that big curve ball, that sinker. And what? Get you out. <laughs> Two balls, no strikes to Munson. Drago comes on the pitch to much and gets immediately behind 2 and 0. Burleson will play at the second base. They just hit Blair there for the force. And the side is retired. No runs. A base hit. One man left through eight and a half. The Yankees five. The Red Sox four. By having your own full season or combination plan. Now for more information, call group and season sales at 212-293-6000. That number again, 212-293-6000. Paul Blair in the ball game to play center field for the Yankees. Gary Thomason over in left field. Lou Pinella is still in right. There's Blair in center. We got a glimpse of Thomason earlier. And Dwight Evans will bat for Frank Duffy here in the bottom half of the ninth inning. The Yankees lead by one. It's Yankees five, the Boston Red Sox four. Red Sox took a one to nothing lead in the in the second inning. They had a two nothing lead after six. Yankees scored four big ones in the seventh. Three run home run by Bucky Dent, responsible for three of those runs. Had an insurance run in the eighth. A home run by Reggie Jackson in the center field. Red Sox came back with two in the bottom of the eighth. And the Yankees lead five four. Here's Dwight Evans. Too low to Evans. Evans batting 248, 24 home runs, 63 runs batted in. And time is called. Gate loose out in the Red Sox bullpen. In the air to left field. Roy, nope, that's Gary Thomason just in for White. And there's one away. Number 
So Evans tried to pull one out of here and hit it in the air to left field for the first out. And here's Rick Burleson, the shortstop. Five home runs, 49 runs batted in, one for four this afternoon. Low again. Goose has got to start getting ahead of some batters. Two and oh. Three balls, no strikes. Three and one. Burleson taken all the way. That short wall and lefty might be cutting on this one. Takes a look at his third base coach, Eddie Yost, for a sign. Ball four. Oh, there's a tying run there at first base. One out, Jerry Remy's a batter. Remy has flied the left twice, sacrificed, and doubled and scored. He's one for three. Out of play off the left side. No chance for Nettles, although he goes way in the corner. Back in the seat, strike one on Remy. Strike two on Remy. It's a big part here with Burleson walking. That'll bring on, unless Remy bounces into a double play, Jim Rice. And get a chance to hit. Still two strikes on Remy. The Yankees, of course, would like to get the ground ball turn to and don't give Rice a chance to swing the bat. He's dangerous. 46 home runs, 139 runs batted in. Vanilla can't see the ball. And they hold the runner at second base. Lou could not see the ball. Fortunately, Foreman's hit right at him. And he got it on the first stop. Again. Ball right over the plate. Remy lines at the right field. Pinella can't see it. But then luckily he gets the ball and Burleson decides to hold there. He might have been out anyway had he gone on to third base. A wise choice by Eddie Oates. Good play by Pinella fighting the elements here at Fenway Park. Here's Jim Rice. And he fouls it back. We saw earlier on the screen Penella trying to shade his eyes to the sun with each each pitch. Ball's just tough to see. Runners at first and second, one away. Red Sox down a run here in the ninth inning. Deep to right, but Penella has room. And the ball was high enough for him to see it tagging at second base and going to third is Burleson. Two outs. This ball game going right down to the wire. Bob Lemon coming out as the batter is Carl Yastrzemski. There's Yaz. Runners at first and third, two outs for the veteran outfielder, first baseman. There's Yes. He 
He's home it struck out, bounced to first, and single, driving in two runs overall. His solo home run in the second inning, and single in a run in the eighth. It's another key situation for him. And that's a tough win on Ryo's son out in right field. Pinella can't see anything at all out there. Got to get that ball up in the air to right field if he pulls it. If he hits it on the line, it'll be tough to see. Two outs, two on. Yankees leading 5 4, bottom half of the ninth inning here at Fenway Park. Too low, ball one. Yankees five runs, eight hits. Red Sox four runs on 11. Popped up. That might be it. Nettles over at third base. He'll squeeze it and it's over. Yastrzemski fouls out the Yankee third baseman Greg Nettles. And look at those Yankees. They have come here in Boston and they have beaten the Red Sox again. Everybody's happy. The final score the Yankees five, the Red Sox four, and the Yankees win the 1978 American League Eastern pennant. Wow. <laughs> the Yankees going down to the wire here. They were down 2 nothing and picked up four big runs in the top of the seventh as Bucky Dennett a three run home run to give the Yankees a three to two lead. Then Mickey Rivers walked and scored on a double by Thurm Munson. and that made it 4 2 Yankees. Yankees got an extra run in the eighth inning when Reggie Jackson hit his 27th home run of the year. That made it 5 2 Yankees. Red Sox picking up two runs in the eighth inning, making it close 5 4. Gossage getting behind the Red Sox batters most of the ball game, running into trouble in the ninth inning. He got Dwight Evans a fly to left field for out number one. Then Rick Brosen walked. Jerry Remy singled in front of Pinella. Pinella making a fine recovery as he could not see the ball. Fortunately for him, the ball was at arm's length, and he reached up and got it and held Brosen at second base. Brosen had thoughts about going to third, but stayed there. And Pinella made a fine throw over there. Then Jim Rice fly to right field to Pinella, and Carl Yastrzemski popped up to Greg Nettles, and it was all over. And we hope to uh, get Phil Rizzo in a dugout soon, so, so stay tuned, and we'll be back, we hope, with some interviews with the Yankee players right after this. Well, it's all over here. The fans still here. They gave their club, the Red Sox, a, an ovation as they left. Of course, they're certainly saddened by the loss here. The Yankees and the Red Sox fighting all the way down to the wire. At one point in Jan July, the Yankees 14 games back, caught the Red Sox here, winning four in a row. Went, his head, went ahead as far as three and a half games. The Red Sox hung in, and finally the last day of the season, it was all tied, and here we are now. The Yankees, the champions once again in the American League East for the third straight year. And don't forget that the Yankees and picks will send the playoffs to you and we'll be on the air tomorrow from Kansas City. Right now, let's go down to the field to uh, Phil Rizzuto. You know what happened on the last play? I didn't get a chance to run. My metal broke. And it came oh, out my wait a minute, here. Buck. We're on the air right now. Well, tell us what happened now on the, when your metal broke on that last play. On the last play of the game, the balls popped up. And uh, as soon as I looked over at Nettles, my, I reached my arm. So I'm come down and dropped it. Well, Bucky Dent, you know, it had to be one of the most dramatic home runs ever hit in any game, and for a season to come down where two teams won 99 games, you normally win the pennant. And a playoff game like this, with all the excitement in the world, you had just fouled a ball off that vulnerable spot on your leg. That's right. And then, whether that
confused Mike Torres and I do you remember the pitch you hit yeah it was a fastball hit it was a fastball hit. it was a fastball uh, did you know it was gone as soon as you hit it no I didn't I, I didn't think I, I hit it good enough I thought I hit it good enough to hit the wall but uh, I was just blowing it and hoping it would get over there <laughs> oh Bucky I said it's you know you need a shortstop the shortstops always come through in the clutch well I, I I've been trying to but uh, lately I haven't driven in many big runs for us and I was just hoping that I could hit the ball somewhere and get us one run because Gid was throwing real well today and I hate to see a guy lose a game like that two to nothing or two to one. Oh Bucky they were the three biggest RBIs you know I almost had really a heart attack up there when you hit that ball because it looked like Torres was going along and might have had a two nothing shutout. I mean that had to be the last thing in your mind a home run right? That's right. Uh, I've been dreaming of this for about a month now to be able to hit a home run to maybe win a game for us or something like that and I'm just glad it came today. Well, Bucky, I want to congratulate you again, really. A great, great playoff game and continued good luck in the playoffs at Kansas City. Thank you very much. Bro. Bucky Dent. And now with us, the president of the New York Yankees, Al Rosen. And Al, you've got to remember 1948, the last time they had a playoff. We did a little bit easier then. We won 8-3. to three. I know, but uh, at that time now, you were kind of riding the bench at that time. I was, I was Kenny Keltner's caddy. <laughs> I know Kenny Keltner was a great third baseman, but it seems strange that you and Bob Lemon both were in the 48 playoffs, and here you are with the Yankees in the 78 playoffs. Well, Lemon and I are celebrating our 30th anniversary. Excuse me, Phil. I've got a bad stomach, and I'm, I'm chewing all these things, but it was a great game, and the thing that stands out, as you know, is these fellows are all professionals. They played like it when they got their act together. They just came on, and when you saw them in the ninth inning of the day, you knew that they were pros. You know, I've got, George Steinbrenner saw me in the lobby this morning. I was biting my nails and he said, Phil, don't worry, we're going to win it. Now, I don't know how a man under that much pressure could be that opportunistic and, you know, think that much. Well, I want to tell you something, Phil. You know what this game is all about. And when those fellas went out to do their job today, they had one thing in mind that was winning. When you see a young man like Bucky Dent come through in the clutch when he hasn't been hitting well, you've got to understand that Bucky has all the professionalism in the world in him. It reminds me a great deal of Bill Rizzuto. <laughs> Al Rosen, the president of the Yankees, and let's send it back up to Bill White. <laughs> all right, Scooter, a couple of happy Yankees. Bucky Dent will hit the three-run home run that gave the Yankees a 3-2 lead in that seventh inning, and Al Rosen, who in his first year as president of the Yankees, of course, is very, very happy here. The Yankees have just won their 100th ball game. They've lost 63. The Red Sox have just lost their 64th. They've won 99. And the Yankees, of course, won it by a game here in the American League 